Hello grade 11s, in this video we'll be covering Boyle's Law. You need to understand the equation that represents Boyle's Law, the relationship between the variables, how to represent this as a graph or understand a graph, and obviously how to do Boyle's Law calculations. Let's jump right into the video, but if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe now. There are several laws that explain the behavior of ideal gases, and we'll be looking at Boyle's Law. Let's have a look at the simulation to help us understand Boyle's Law better. I'm going to be pumping some gas into this container over here. As you can see, the temperature is being measured over here and the pressure is being measured over here. Now, as you can see, as the particles are colliding with each other and with the containers of the wall, the pressure is increasing. But what happens if I make this container smaller? What happens if I decrease the volume? Watch the pressure gauge as I decrease the volume. Can you see that the pressure is increasing? Boyle's law explains the relationship between pressure and volume for gas in a container. So if you take a look at this diagram over here, it says over here that pulling this piston up in the cylinder or the syringe or for this container, it increases the volume. So it makes the container bigger, which decreases the pressure. And if I do the opposite, if I push the syringe down, I'm decreasing the volume, which increases the pressure. So what type of relationship is this? If the one variable goes up and the other variable goes down by the same proportion, it is indeed known as an inversely proportional relationship. So Boyle's law says that the pressure of an enclosed gas pressure is inversely proportional to the volume it occupies at a constant temperature. This is how you write it in symbols. Pressure is inversely proportional to one over volume. So now my students and I, we call this a little fish symbol. Remember if I had to write this just like that, that would mean directly proportional. But as soon as I take the second variable and say one over volume, how you read this is pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So if it's underneath the fraction, if it's one over, then this variable is inversely proportional to this variable. You can also read this as pressure is directly proportional to one over volume. And from this relationship, we have this equation, P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2, which I will go over in a second. Remember, temperature must be constant. Another thing that actually needs to remain constant is also the amount of gas, the number of moles of gas. Because of course, if I start pumping more gas in the container, the pressure will increase. So it's for the same temperature, same number of moles, pressure and volume are inversely proportional. And another thing that you need to be able to do is to use the kinetic theory of gases, which I've gone over in a previous video in the playlist linked down below in order to explain this relationship, in order to explain Boyle's law. How does it connect to the kinetic theory of gases? Now, remember, if I decrease the volume, okay, decreasing the volume of a gas. So I'm decreasing the volume over here, as you can see, it means that there will be the same number of particles so if you look at this picture, there's 11 particles, 11 little dots representing the gas particles. They're the same in both pictures. So it means that there will be the same amount of particles, but because you're decreasing the volume, they are going to come into contact with each other and with the walls of the container a lot more frequently. There will be a lot more collisions per unit time. The number of collisions of gas particles will increase. And that is directly relates to pressure. Remember, we said that pressure is a measure of the number of collisions that the gas particles have with the container walls. So if we decrease volume, pressure will increase. And the opposite is also true. When it comes to Boyle's law, you need to be able to do the following. I took this from your exam guidelines. Here's an example of a table with a set of data points that you need to be able to interpret. So if you look over here, we have pressure. And in this case it's measured in kilopascals which i did cover the different variables in another video in this playlist so go check that out and we've got volume measured in cubic centimeters and if you take a look at the table and you can see that as i go down pressure is increasing so from 100.33 it's increasing as you go here it's increasing as you go here but if you look at volume as you go down volume is decreasing. So already from the set of data in the table, we can tell that this is representing Boyle's law and that inversely proportional relationship. 
Another way to represent that relationship is graphically. You need to be able to draw a graph. You need to be able to interpret a graph. So here we've got pressure on the y-axis. We've got volume on the x-axis. Here's P1, V1. So this is one set of data points. So think of that table. It's one pressure and one volume data pair and plot it over there. And here's another one. And as you can see, as the volume is increasing, so as we're going this way on volume, volume is increasing, pressure is going down, and we get this inversely proportional curve that looks just like that. So here are the graphs that they can give you that represent Boyle's law. And these represent the relationship. P is directly proportional to 1 over V, so that would represent this graph. P, pressure, is directly proportional to 1 over over v remember i said that that's how you read that if it's a directly proportional relationship remember it's a straight line a straight line graph that goes through the origin and you might be thinking but ma'am i thought you just said that pressure and volume were inversely proportional i did but remember this is not pressure against volume it's pressure against one over volume okay the reciprocal of volume Basically, if you take the reciprocal and it's an inversely proportional relationship, it will result in a directly proportional graph. And I challenge you to try this on Excel or even on pen, um, with pen and paper to see if it works because it does. And this is the relationship here between pressure and volume. So not the reciprocal of volume, just volume. You can see that it is an inversely proportional relationship. And remember that temperature and number of moles, the amount of gas must be constant. Constant. This is the formula that you will use for Boyle's law. P1 times V1, so pressure, 1, volume, 1. So this is for situation number 1. Let's say for a bigger container, so bigger volume, therefore P will be smaller. Then let's say we decrease the volume, then pressure will get bigger. So that will be scenario number 2, P2 and V2. Remember again, T and N are constant. And what's nice about this formula is that volume can be in any unit as long as both sides have the same unit. So what I mean by that is you can't substitute in a volume over here that's measured in cubic decimeters and a volume over here that's measured in cubic centimeters. That won't work. They need to have the same unit in order for it to work properly. Same thing with pressure. It can be in any unit as long as both sides have the same unit. Let's look at our first example to do a calculation for Boyle's law. So we have a container has a volume of two cubic decimeters. The pressure of gas is 12 pascals. That's the unit for pressure. The volume is now increased to six cubic decimeters. What's the new pressure? So it's simply, we write the formula. My initial volume is two cubic decimeters. So V1 is going to be two. The pressure of the gas initially is 12 just like that, then the volume of the container is now increased to 6. So this will be 6. What is the new pressure? P2. That's what we're looking for. So 12 times 2 is 24. Then P2, pressure 2, multiplied by 6. In order to solve for P2, we say 24 divided by 6, and we get the new pressure as being 4 pascals. There we go. Just remember to get all your marks. You need to write your blank formula first, substitute, answer with units. What if we went back to this table and I asked you to find X? Well, what we're going to do is we already know that the data represents Boyle's law because we said that as the pressure increases that way, the volume decreases, as you can see. So what we do is we start with our Boyle's law formula. So P1, V1 equals P2 v2 then what you can do is we're looking for x so we're looking for a pressure we have the corresponding volume for that pressure these two go together that's a data point then you can select any of the other three data points to go in your first scenario so i'm going to select the first two just because they're the first two on the table so let me write it over here in the place of P1, I will be putting 100,33. Remember, I know it's in kilopascals, and in the previous example, we worked in pascals, but it doesn't matter as long as the pressure is the same on both sides of the table. So that's pressure 1. Volume 1 is 7,34 cubic centimeters. Now, 
pressure two, I'm going to use this. So this was my first scenario. That was my number one scenario. So that's P1 and that is V1. This is going to be P2 and V2. P2, I do not know. It's X. And V2 is 6,97. So what I simply do to find X is I multiply these two together, get it onto my calculator. And then what I do to get X by itself, it's multiplication over here. So I say 736,4222 divided by 6,97. And I get X as being 105,66 kilopascals. Now, just read your question carefully because the question might ask for X, but they might say give your answer or give your, yeah, give your answer in Pascals. Then you'll need to do a conversion. And just remember that one kilopascal is equal to 1000 Pascals. Just remember that. I hope this video has been helpful for more videos on gases, ideal gases, gas laws, practice questions, exam questions. Click the link in the description box below. I hope to see you for more videos in the future. Bye everyone.